Hello and welcome to Inside Edition to discuss national and regional issues in depth. Our main focus today will be on the 200th anniversary of the deep-rooted relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom, which are witnessing a boost in joint cooperation in all fields. We will be discussing the matter with Shura Council Member Ms. Nancy Kaduri. But first, this report for more. In 1816, the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom signed the first Treaty of Mutual Friendship, which paved the way to a celebrating 200 years of distinguished relations, strong bilateral commercial interaction, vibrant business links, and ever stronger two-way exchange of knowledge, technology, innovation, and culture. In line with the bicentury theme, Bahrain and the UK have set the ambitious target of holding 200 events within 12 weeks to celebrate this momentous anniversary reflecting the full breadth of relationship. The two kingdoms are demonstrating the huge range of areas in which they work together, such as business, entrepreneurship, heritage, culture, sports, health, education, technology, food and fashion, with the aim of underlining the real benefits that have come from such great partnership and friendship. At the end of last month, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa visited London, where he met Her Majesty the Queen, the UK's Prime Minister, the ambassadors of Gulf State to the United Kingdom and a number of parliamentarians. During the visit, His Majesty extended an invitation to UK's Prime Minister Theresa May to attend the 37th Gulf Cooperation Council Summit being hosted in Manama next month. His Majesty, as the summit's president, also outlined the Council's interest in a free trade agreement between the UK and the GCC, which would significantly increase the UK's access to the GCC's 1.3 trillion market a market estimated to grow by further 400 billion by 2020. Bilateral trade between Bahrain and the UK generated 432 million in 2015 alone, an increase of 35% on the previous year. And the Kingdom is firmly committed to expanding these mutually beneficial trade relations. Relative to its size, Bahrain already hosts a large number of British companies, 500 British brands, 90 British company branches, and 350 Bahraini British business partnerships. These businesses operate in some of Bahrain's key sectors, including banking, accounting, law, and industry. Bahrain is building on its long standing status as the gateway to the GCC's rapidly expanding market, leveraging our highly educated workforce and liberal business environment, which offers a low tax regime and some of the lowest business costs in the region to attract international investors. In this post Brexit world, these long-standing trade ties provide the perfect platform to deepen and expand trading links with the entire region. The 200th anniversary is a remarkable testament to the enduring ties between both countries and hails the beginning of another 200 years of deep, wide-ranging ties between the UK and Bahrain. Joining us in the studio is Ms. Nancy Hijuri, who is a Shura Council member as well as a member of the Bahrain UK Friendship Committee. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, Ms. Nancy, Bahrain and the UK are celebrating 200 years of uh, friendship and collaboration this year. What encourages these strong relationships? Uh, the bilateral relationship between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom officially began in 1816, very deep-rooted history. Uh, key dates to remember, of course, to highlight would be in 1820 there was a treaty signed whereby, the, um, whereby Great Britain recognized Al Khalifa as the legitimate rulers of Bahrain. And then after that, many treaties were signed, many visits were exchanged. Uh, and shortly after that, we had Sir Charles Belgrave, um, an advisor to the rulers of Bahrain from the years of 1926 to 1957. Uh, he is accredited with a number of major achievements in our country, such as education system, uh, the civil and criminal courts, and uh, functioning of well-trained police uh, service. Mm -hmm. uh, after Bahrain gained its independence in 1970, Great Britain and, ba uh, and Bahrain signed a friendship treaty. Now, as to what encouraged these uh, strong relations yeah. till today, mm -hmm. in my opinion, it is the will of each respective leadership of each country and the people to maintain this uh, wonderful connection, uh, as well as we must remember that both countries are uh, 
like-minded mm -hmm. in the sense that we have similar um, ideas as to key global and regional issues. Uh, the people of each country are connected uh, in bilateral ways, be it culture, be it uh, social, economic, political issues. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also both countries share common agreements such as the United Nations agreements. Yeah. Uh, also we have, uh, uh, as well as the, this kind of connection, we have also seen important delegations throughout the years that has helped uh, establish this connection. So it's really the will of the people. Right. Yeah. Um, we, s uh, I mean, in Bahrain, we saw a lot of celebrations for the uh, two hundred uh, year anniversary. Yes. Um, but tell us more about how both countries celebrated this. Well, they celebrated in a very big way because we've had event after event since the beginning of this year. Yeah. It is a very special uh, mm -hmm. anniversary. The bicentennial anniversary began here in Bahrain in January. And uh, as far as I know that the embassy had 200 events lined up for the whole year. Mm -hmm. To my understanding, they've already completed 142 to date. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, more, more uh, are to come. But it began in January on HMS Defender. Uh, and it was on board the Daring Class uh, Defense uh, Destroyer. We had the Bahrain Air Show. Yes. Uh, where uh, Typhoon aircraft from the Royal Air Force also thrilled the crowds. Mm -hmm. um, very recently, we had uh, the, w uh, the visit of uh, His Royal Highness Prince Charles yes. and the Duchess of Cornwall. Uh, they visited, uh, you know, to, to mark this historical moment of bicentennial relations. They visited our post office museum. Mm -hmm. There was a commemoration of a very special stamp on this occasion. Mm -hmm. um, His Royal Highness Prince of Wales also visited the Royal Navy. Uh, we had also the setup of HMS Jufair officially uh, inaugurated yeah. as well. Uh, Ambassador has had so many events. Uh, we have also the British Council Bahrain uh, taking part in film festivals. Um, the British Film Institute, uh, uh, they, they uh, curated a very special program to do about Shakespeare's work. So the life of Shakespeare was qu uh, accessible internationally. Yeah for Shakespeare lovers. Uh, and again, uh, we've seen a STEM event, which is science, technology, engineering, and maths. I mean, mm -hmm. the very brainy students mm -hmm. from Bahrain schools and uh, British schools in the country involved in understanding the uh, science behind the flight. And we had uh, 600 students, I believe, in March, and uh, many others again uh, th this early of this month in November. Uh, we've also seen Food Month, hosted mm -hmm. by a large number of hotels, yeah. uh, creating a fusion of a very special cuisine. Uh, special thanks to the clubs in the country, like the British Club, the Rugby Club, the Dillman Club. Uh, they've hosted very special events, Sarah, to mark this uh, special yes. uh, uh, anniversary. Mm -hmm. We've also seen uh, 37 members of the uh, Bahrain Society in UK visit Bahrain. Yeah. Uh, another distinguished event we had locally was the Spitfire yes. aircraft at yes. the museum, which was awesome. It was also at the air show. It was at the air show as well, yeah. yes. And this was, of course, special thanks to the Royal Air Force. Uh, it was displayed at our National Museum, and we have seen this as the most famous fighter aircraft in history that uh, really defended the, uh, the skies, including Bahrain in World War II. Uh, apart from that, we also have uh, f British foods in the supermarkets. We've had concerts by Bahraini British artists to help in this theme. And also like to touch upon events hosted by the Bahrain British Business Forum, of which I'm a member of, where we had key guest speakers. And we've got um, the ambassador, His Excellency Simon Martin, mm -hmm. guest speaker as well for the Christmas lunch uh, in two days' time. Yeah. So there's been uh, um, a, a huge schedule of events, and we must also remember the visit of His Majesty uh, yeah. to the United Kingdom recently, where he met with uh, Her Majesty the Queen, uh, parliamentarians, ministers. Uh, also, we have an invitation offered to uh, the British Prime Minister, Theresa May, who will be coming for the GCC summit uh, next right. week, and uh, we look forward to that. Great, great. Yeah. Um, I mean, w we touched on a lot of subjects, but the, the, the friendship between the countries is not only a friendship that uh, is between the royal families and the people of Bahrain and the UK, but it's also a cooperation a friendship, very strong cooperations in various fields, particularly trade and commerce. Um, what are the efforts that will further boost joint work between both countries, not just in these fields generally? Uh, good question. Uh, indeed, the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom have a strong commercial relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, the greatest potential lies in promoting two-way investment. Uh, 
Um, I just like to touch upon that not only we have in trade, we've had police reform, judicial yes. reform by UK experts, which we are very thankful to them for. Uh, in 2006, we had an agreement signed between Bahrain and the UK for promotion of protection uh, of investments designed to uh, allow favorable conditions for greater investment by nationals and companies of one state in the territory of another state. Uh, in 2007, we saw a cooperation agreement signed between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the London Stock Exchanges. Uh, 2012 saw a defence cooperation agreement signed uh, to promote intelligence sharing, um, education, scientific and technical cooperation and joint training of military forces. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also share a very strong academic relationship. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, that's reinforced by inter-university, uh, private public academic uh, agreements. We have the Crown Prince Scholarship Program mm -hmm. that sends students not only to universities in the United States, but also in the United Kingdom, very renowned universities. Um, the students are very grateful to have this wonderful opportunity. Uh, we've also witnessed the inauguration of the King Hamed Hall at the Royal Military Academy in Sandhurst. Mm -hmm. um, and as a legislator myself, uh, serving in the Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security Committee, we had also passed the agreement not too long ago for the uh, evasion of double taxation. Yes. Uh, we have that with many countries, and one of it, of course, is with the United Kingdom. Uh, and annually, our country, as you're aware, celebrates the Manama Dialogue. Yes. Uh, this is one of the major events hosted by the International Institute for Strate uh, Strategic Studies. And the guest speakers highlight a very important global, uh, global matters, regional matters. Um, and the forthcoming dialogue is taking place from the 9th to the 11th of December. And we are very much looking forward to our guest speaker, who this year will be Boris Johnson, yes. Foreign Secretary of the United Kingdom. Yes. And uh, of course, uh, we know Bahrain is of strategic <coughs> importance to the United Kingdom. Uh, because both countries are serious, as I mentioned before, it's the will of the countries, mm -hmm. the leadership, the people. So it's the seriousness about engaging together, building upon a strong friendship, uh, adding bricks to an already solid foundation yes. is what's taking place. And, uh, you know, shared interests, defense, culture, education, and many more. Great. Yeah. Um, I mean, you talked about a solid foundation, and that's basically what kept this friendship very strong. Absolutely. But we know for a fact that um, Great Britain, or you the United Kingdom right now, is, is going through a lot of changes. And one of these major changes is Brexit. And um, there are some controversies people talk about, about how is it going to affect the Gulf, and particularly Bahrain? Well, I think the immediate direct knee-jerk reaction of the market to the British pound mm. uh, enhanced the touring opportunities. Uh, people were well able now to afford holidays mm -hmm. uh, in the United Kingdom. It was more reasonable on the pocket. Mm. Uh, it helps to enhance trade, investment, education, tourism, in my opinion. Uh, the United Kingdom has always been a preferred destination for all GCC nationals. Yeah. And as Bahrainis, we know London to us is really second home. Everybody loves London. We love the English weather. Yeah. Um, and of course, we have many who have already invested in the property. Mm -hmm abroad and it'll become even more attractive I feel in the wake of Brexit. Uh, we've had uh, if you recall the Gulf Cooperation Council with the uh, European Union yeah. they were always discussing a uh, free trade agreements and this has been going on I think under negotiation uh, since the past uh, two decades yeah. uh, and I feel that Brexit will give uh, will allow the United Kingdom an opportunity to quickly conclude uh, such bilateral agreements, uh, free trade agreements, uh, with the GCC countries, hence benefiting uh, both sides. Mm -hmm. um, bilateral uh, trade between uh, Bahrain and the UK generated 432 million in 2005 alone, an increase of 35% compared to that of 2014. Uh, we see the United Kingdom firmly committed to expanding this mutually um, uh, beneficial trade relations. And relative to its size, our country, Bahrain, already hosts a large number of British companies. Um, 500 British brands, to my understanding, maybe it's more as we speak to date. Uh, 90 British company branches, 350 Bahraini, biz, uh, Bahraini British business partnerships, yes. mainly, of course, in banking sector, uh, accounting, law and industry. Mm. 
And of course, we are, we're working together to uh, build on our long-standing status uh, for a highly educated workforce, liberal business environment. Remember that we also have a very uh, low rate uh, tax scheme as well, or uh, not, not even no tax scheme here at all. So we have some of the lowest business costs in the region. And I think for that, it is um, a great uh, attraction to international investors. Um, in this post-Brexit world, it is indeed, I'm sure, a challenge to the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. but we leave them to, to deal with it uh, with their uh, partners in the EU. Mm -hmm. But of course, these long-standing trade ties uh, has managed to provide the, the perfect platform, Sarah, to deepen and expand the trading links. Mm -hmm. Both countries have always been uh, mutually supportive of each other. And uh, it's great to know that Britain remains the fifth largest economy in the world, mm -hmm. uh, the second fastest major growing economy as per what it was ranked in the world last year. Uh, they're one of the top six countries uh, as a place to do business. Yes. So we as Bahrainis, of course, and other countries <coughs> globally can be confident about the fundamental strengths of the UK economy and optimistic about building this uh, trading link in future and uh, in fields of, of, of uh, new growth, for example, as technology, uh, more dynamic and creative uh, uh, measures. And of course, our two island nations, though geographically small, we're always known to be able to punch above the weight, you know, on the world stage. And I'd just like to touch on